Good Monday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and hope you have a blessed day. Hope to be a little part of that blessing as we go through the Holy Word of God, the Bible, chapter by chapter. Today we uh, go through Mark chapter 7 as the thought of the day. And as I went through this chapter of the scriptures this morning, when I came to verses 18 to 20, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is having this back and forth a little bit with the Pharisees, the religious people of his day. And basically what Christ is teaching is that it's not so much what you eat or washing cups and plates that makes you clean or unclean, but it's from the heart that we need to be concerned about. The Pharisees were so worried about Jesus' and followers and his disciples not cleaning their hands before eating and making sure that the plates were sparkling clean, but yet their hearts were deceitful and wicked. And Christ is saying it's not what comes, what goes into your stomach that defiles you, it's what comes out. In other words, Christ is more concerned about our hearts and not lip service. Uh, Christ would go on to tell us in Mark chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, what comes out of our hearts by nature, apart from the grace of God, uh, it's not a pretty sight. And it reminds me of the Apostle Paul, what he taught uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in two, on two occasions. First in Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, where Paul said that all the Old Testament rituals, what day to worship on, sacrifices, those things were shadows of the things to come. It's been fulfilled and, and it's all been accomplished now in Christ. A little later on in our Bibles in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, we're told that we are not to judge anybody by the foods that they eat. Until The only thing we should be concerned about is that we give thanks to God for what we're eating. It's not what you eat, it's your attitude towards the food. But let's also make it clear that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit and the Lord resides in us in the, in the Holy Spirit in our bodies and we should be good stewards of what God has given us, these temples. I have what's called lactose intolerance. Gluten, I have a gluten sensitivity. As many of you know, and I thank you for your prayers, I've been going to a chiropractor for my back, found out that I was acidic and I need to be more alkaline you might have heard of those phrases. Acidity causes inflammation. He is a nutritionist also, not just a chiropractor, and he's very holistic. He did some tests on me. He examined my diet. He said that you're eating very good food, healthy foods, but some of it is too acidic. So he wants me more alkaline. So we need to be reminded that we need to be careful what we eat. It's not that if I eat something that has milk in it, it's not going to bring, send me to hell. But it's not, it's, I'm not being a good steward of the body God gave me. We need to use wisdom. We need to be careful of our hearts. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 tells us, As a man or woman thinks, so they are. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, we're reminded that we are to guard our hearts. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says we are to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. You see, the, the Lord is looking for heart service. It's not so much what we eat or what day we worship on. I, for one, I know there's much debate over Sabbath, you know, Saturday to Sunday Sabbath. But as I just quoted the scriptures in the New Testament, Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, the Lord is not worried what day you worship on now. Yes, in the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, we had the Sabbath and we had to keep it. And then we see in the New Testament, through the book of Acts and the epistles, that that was being moved now more to the Lord's Day, Sunday, where, where the church got together on Sunday. But I don't think God is concerned so much about what day you worship on as to who you worship on that day. And let's make it clear that we should be worshiping the Lord every day, <clears throat> not just Saturday or Sunday. Every day of the week should be a day we worship God. Yes, there is a set day set aside for when we come together, the corporate body, and come together and worship the Lord. But it's the heart that we need to be careful of. Not so much how we dress or, or uh, you know, worrying about the parking spot, worrying about the air conditioner, how's the heating, how are the pews, are they comfortable? These things shouldn't really matter. Yes, it's nice to be comfortable, but 
God is not looking for comfortable. God's looking for heart service. He's looking like he looked for a man after his own heart in David. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. David was a man after God's own heart. And we read a little later on as he was going to be anointed to be the next king of Israel in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, when all the sons of Jesse came out to, to meet uh, Samuel, the prophet, uh, priest, uh, from Bethlehem and he had eight sons and seven of them came up and they're all probably good-looking handsome strong guys and Everybody thought one of these guys had to be the king because of his size and looks but God it says in 1st Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 looks at the heart Christ himself in his public ministry like in John chapter 2 verse 24 and 25 Would not trust himself to people because he saw what was in their hearts My friends if God looks at your heart and he does what does he see? What does he see in me? I could come out here and do these videos and people could say, wow, what a, what a, a, a godly person. Uh, but when the camera shuts off and I have to go on with the rest of my day, what's in my heart? God looks at that. Not so much what I could say, but what I'm doing. What am I thinking? Do I have the love of Christ in me? Do I understand the love of God? Psalm 107 verse 43. Do we understand the, the love of God? And that love of God is seen in Christ. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. The depths and the, not, uh, uh, the heights of the love of God, which surpasses all understanding, is found in, in Christ. Can I say, like David, in Psalm 18, verse 1, I love you, Lord. I grew up not seeing much love. You know, oftentimes when children grow up, not seeing a lot of affection and love in the home, when they grow up, it's very hard for them to show or express love. And even in my walk with God, it's hard for me to understand that God can love me. You know, a person like me. But I know, I don't, I know I'm not supposed to base my walk with the Lord on my feelings and emotions, but on what the Word of God and the promises of God's Word says to me. My friends, today, I hope today we will learn to guard our hearts. God sees the heart. This, this is where the sin, this is where sin starts. You know, in James chapter 1, verses 13 to 15, the Bible tells us there that when we're tempted to sin, we're not to blame God. Any lust, any desires that we have that go contrary to God's word come from the heart. It starts with the thought, the emotion, uh, the feelings, the look, the sound, the feel, the hand, whatever. And that's how we fall into sin and ultimately into death. Guard your hearts this day. And the only way we could do that is staying in the Word of God. Psalm 119 verses 9 to 11 tells us how can we keep ourselves from sin? By staying in the Word of God and obeying God's Word. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. Lord, may I guard my heart and all who will hear this video today from the evil influences of the world, the devil, and ultimately from our own flesh. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all.